Hey peeps, I hope that you're keeping well and that you and your loved ones are all good. It's Bianca. I know it's been a while, but I am back again with another vocal analysis. First of all, I just want to say a hearty thank you to everyone who has sent me personal messages, DMs, the lot in regards to the recent vocal analysis that I did on the band Disturbed, who sang a cover of Simon and Garfunkel's The Sounds of Silence. Honestly, uh... <laughs> I'm just grateful. Let me just keep it short and sweet. I'm grateful and I appreciate you all. Um, basically, I have said to myself, you know what? Those who know me, as in personally, know that I love all the new stuff that's coming out lately. However, I am an old soul. I do love my nostalgia. I do love the music that can take me back to times where I was not and help me to reminisce in regards to what it may have been like. So I'm going to be doing a little bit more of the vintage eras, a little bit more nostalgic tracks and i'm hoping that if you have any suggestions you can let me know in the comments below um in regards to maybe songs that you think you would want to hear an analysis on but yeah i'm going to be doing a, i'm going to be doing the best of both a bit of new and a bit of old you know mixing it up a little so if you like what you hear as well as what you see do not forget to join the vocal nova community if you haven't already and subscribe and of course in the comments below i will be wonderfully privileged to find out your opinion on this song so you ready to get into it okay let's go listen do you know what is just so amazing the fact that you don't even see him build up to executing that superb sweet and so piercing falsetto sound he's just there bumping along with the band with his brothers getting ready to do what they do so epically and then he just comes in with it and let's see i believe that that note has to definitely it's got to be within the four or five range um and for a gentleman, that is very, very good. Like four or five, we're sitting in mezzo soprano, high, higher alto ranges. Um, so the, okay, a B4, I would say. Yeah, and the way that he hit that was just so clean and so crisp. Absolutely fantastic. Let's carry on. hear that nice undertone of the lower octave coming through night fever night fever you know how to and he's coming through that's barry i'm on about night fever night fever so it's not like they're all going for it in the falsetto you get that nice even balance as we are going through the song so it's like everyone has an opportunity to sing along you're not someone in the audience like eh! you know what i mean so i like that really really nice sound as well very very cohesive um, you can definitely see and hear within the geniality as well that even the tonality of them all fuses so well together. The lightness, everyone's keeping it light, but even in that piercing falsetto, we still get a nice brightness. It doesn't start to wither away. And you know what? You cannot fault the power of experience. I repeat, you cannot fault the power of experience because with experience comes additional confidence. And with that confidence comes security. And with security, you are able to then challenge yourself more and have a lot more freedom. And you can just see that the gentlemen are vocally free. They are secure in one another and they are definitely confident to just have fun and allow the audience to just experience the beauty of what the Bee Gees bring. And even, even now, I just be like, oh, what an amazing experience it would be to have been there in that moment, honestly. Absolutely lush. just where we had that making it mine right i really love the fact 
that Barry here is somewhat demonstrating to us subtly how he's keeping this sound really, really strong, although it is in such a higher range for a male to sing. Because remember, it's not soft, it's not smooth, it is in your face piercing. So we get a real, real good sense of his twang quality coming through here. So that, hey, yeah, which basically is where the sound is super forward, but there's also a slight execution of thyroid tilt in there as well. And of course, his larynx has to be high for him to execute the sound so effortlessly. So that, right, as opposing to making it mine, we don't get mine. That quality and that sound is just going poop, poop, poop. Oh, but again, this is what they are known for. So yeah, show up and show out, Barry. I love it. So here, again, where he's delivering this and he's giving that, just trying to keep a hold of you, right? That, hang on, hang on you, right? You can see the way as well that he is really, really regulating and managing those breaths so that when he comes back in with that, right? The way that he is able to manage and regulate those breaths is ensuring that that note when he comes back into it is firm and it is intentional and it is also accurate. It's really important, I think, especially if you want to have a good quality head voice and a real good quality falsetto, that we understand how the mechanics work outside of um, basically saying, oh, don't sing from your throat, sing from your chest. There's way more to it than that. And even when you're in a falsetto or in a heady kind of voice, it's still important to remember that your support system needs to be supported and that it needs to be engaged and that those breaths also need to be cycled and regulated. That was a really good example that Barry just gave us there, which was why those notes were still on point. And as you can see, the audience love it. start i will always embrace the fact that oh the bgs the bgs god rest maurice's soul as well god rest his soul you know whenever they come in with their harmonies they are always so beautiful and they are always so coherent with one another it's really difficult to ascertain who's doing what unless you already know as a pre-warning like their voices just fuse so excellently together in every way shape and form and I really appreciate that. I mentioned it in one of my shorts, the fact that, of course, their genes as well. So the way that they are built, their muscles. When Barry again comes in with their, yeah, more than a woman, right? We are hitting full on soprano notes here and he just does it so well. And of course, Robin and Maurice, they hold it down beautifully with that lovely, sweet, sensual aura. They keep that going. And that then allows, of course, for Barry to just do what needs to be done with those staple falsetto high notes there. Such a wonderful performance. Ah, oh, peeps, if you like what you hear as well as what you experience with myself, don't forget to subscribe. And of course, that is my vocal analysis of the Bee Gees Night Fever forward slash more than a woman. I can't wait to do more of these. And of course, until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care, much love and God bless. Bye.